What's the deal, everybody? Welcome back to The Office. Jeremy Deal here, and that's right. I said office again, if you cannot tell by what's around me, because I'm going to cover my most requested tutorial to date. I'm going to be talking about color grading the Air 2S drone footage for real estate in particular. Now, over the years, as my workload has increased, I have not only increased my knowledge on color grading in DaVinci Resolve, but I've also shortened and simplified certain techniques to get the best result with the least amount of time input. My color grading technique is very easy. Honestly, I think anyone with no color grading experience can pull this off. So before I blabber on too much, let's just jump right into the computer. We're gonna go through four different scenarios because I hate when people give you a tutorial on the easiest lighting situation possible. So I have four different situations. One is just a typical front yard. One is a super shady wooded front yard. One is a regular backyard. And one is once again, a very nice super shady backyard. So you can see how to deal with these situations in particular. So let's dive right into the first example. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know how this process goes. So I'm going to dive right in. And the very first thing I'm going to do, close this effects. And I'm going to make a few nodes. Alt S is the way I do it on a PC. There are tons of ways to do it. You can right click and add them. If you need tutorials on all that, you can go back and look at it. I'm not going to cover any of the basics. I'm covering how I now color grade. So I go five nodes very simple process i stack them on top of each other just to make it nice and easy for me this one i'm going to call the primary node because this is where i will make my primary adjustments this one i am going to call my log because this was where i will make all of my color adjustments these two down here for later this one i'm going to turn off but i am going to label it and you'll see what this is for later. You can read, so it's pretty obvious what it's for, but I'll show you how I deal with it. Then here we're going to have our CST or our color space transform. And lastly, we're gonna have something special that I'll touch on at the very end. So here we go. We're gonna start doing our base corrections. You wanna make sure your vector scope over here is on waveform. There we go. So you can see everything that's going on. Now, the very first thing we're going to want to do is our color space transform. Grab your color space transform node, open up your effects and scroll right down. It's very close to the top. There it is. Color space transform. Drag this on over. Now, if you're not shooting in log footage, then you will not have to do this step. I shoot everything in log, especially on the Air 2S because it drastically helps the grading in post-production. If you're just shooting in normal mode, you will not need to do this, but this is how I do it. So you go through and fill out all of your input color space. So we've got the DJI gamut, DJI D-Log, color space output. I want to be Rec 709 and gamma 2.4 those are the ones i seem to use the most or seems to work the best for me on the air 2s dji d gamut dji log converting to rec 709 output gamma 2.4 all right let's rock and roll now you can see my waveforms over here are nice and high i never like to bring my highs above 896 so the very first thing i'm going to do is bring down my gain and look how much better that instantly looks well first of all we should not have the CST layer selected while we're doing our primary adjustments. Go back to primaries and I'll bring that gain right back down, just like I said before. And look how good that looks already from basically out of camera to this, right? Here we go. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is bring your saturation up because log levels always keep saturation down. I go about 75, that's roughly what I do. And then I go over to color boost and I drop it down 0.5%. What this does is it helps starting to eliminate a little bit of that digital saturation that happens. And I know you know what I'm talking about when your greens start getting fluorescent. So I'm bringing up the saturation and dropping the boost just a little bit. This is it right here. Now, if I need to do some log corrections, that's where I'd come over here and select log. And this is where I would change the actual colors of the house. It looks like it may be a tiny bit pink, 
so we can bring a little bit of that down get rid of that pink and it's only a little adjustment but see how much of that pink got wrong so we'll zoom back out and this is what we're looking at as you can see down here all of our blacks are crushed quote unquote which means they're slammed all the way down which means there should be no noise in them but it looks like they're really low. So we'll go over to the HDR mode, grab this shadow slider and bring it up a little bit just to bring a little bit of detail back in the shadows, but we're not trying to raise up our blacks because that will increase the amount of noise you're gonna get. So there we go, that looks really good, just like that. Let's go to before and after, so you can see before, after, before, after. Very nice, very clean, but the problem with this, in my opinion, is the problem that always happens with digital products. I've been trying to remove this digital saturation from my stuff. Now, what you could do is you can come over here and you can reduce the saturation some more, but it reduces the saturation of everything. And then once you bring your saturation down so low, it just looks a little dull. So it is removing the fluorescent greens over here that I don't like, but it also gets rid of a lot of the yellows and the other colors that I do really want to pop. So I bring this back up to 75, just like before where everything looks fluorescent and I'm gonna add my secret sauce. And this is actually the Dehancer plus. Plugin. I have it copied from before. So if I just press, boom, there we go. And it removes so much of this digital saturation. Look at it. So this is with the Hanser on. Check out this area in particular. Let's see. There we go. So without Dehancer, normal. This is just the color saturation that the DJI Air produces and with the dehancer on it tones all of that down now i'm not going to go through my specific dehancer uh everything i have in this plugin in particular because that is going to be at another later date where i delve strictly into it and i know you may be tempted to go ahead and go buy this right away because this greatly helps the final product but if you just hold on for two more days i have a video coming out that may help you in getting this plugin but i digress Let's continue on for now. So the last one I have over here is the sky darken node and we don't need this on this house in particular. So we will get to this a little bit later, but just know that's what it's for. Now that I have this all built out, what I'm gonna do, I will grab my other nodes and press that middle mouse button and it steals all those grades. So they're all built out. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here. I'm gonna reset both of these because I don't need the primary adjustments and the log adjustments from the first house. This is the second house. As I can see from this clip, as I'm scrolling through, it's a very wooded property that opens up to a very bright, yard so this is a difficult situation to deal with and i'll show you how i did it and i did it in two different layers not just the one so we'll go with number one first thing we're going to do is go ahead and do our primary adjustments as always so let's make sure the cst is turned on and there we go look how dark that is with the cst because i was exposing for this house in the background so for this first layer i'm going to expose for everything in the foreground since that's what came first so we'll bring up our gamma just like that nice and high bring down the lift a little so we're crushing those blacks again bring down the gain a little bit there we go, that's looking better. It's still not looking perfect. So let's go over to our shadows. We can raise our shadows up just like before and look at the drastic difference that makes. Bring down the darks just a tiny bit to make sure we're not bringing them too far up. Then I'll go back over here and the last thing I'm gonna go down to is this highlight down here. Now this is kind of like an auxiliary highlight adjustment other than just gains and lights that you can see here. You can come over here to the highlight and if you crank it down, you can see what it does. Look first over at the scopes as I crank it down and up. So that's it all the way down. That's it all the way up. See how it's messing with just the highlights. You can now watch in the screen up here and I'll once again crank it all the way down, all the way up. So if I level it back out, that's what my grade looked like before. I'm gonna drop those highlights until the sky looks nice, which is about right there. It's not perfect. Now what happens whenever I do this, let's click on over and get rid of this for a second. 
as I play forward in the clip, you'll notice that the house gets brighter and brighter as I get towards it because the sun starts opening up. And this is where the second layer comes in. So if I scooch on back over to my edit mode, you'll notice on top of this, I have an adjustment layer. You can get an adjustment layer by clicking right over here in your effects. Here we go. I'm used to working on dual screen. So things are a little swapped around on the single screen. And you'll come up here, type adjustment in toolbox there's an adjustment clip right there you drag it down onto your timeline and this works just like adjustment layers in premiere pro in case you were curious and that's where i kind of got this idea from to make it easy for me there are other ways to do this this is just the easiest way that i've personally found to do it for my workaround so when you come over here, I grab this adjustment clip. I go all the way to the end of the clip to see where the house is the most. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down this gain a little bit, bring down the lift a little bit, just make it a little bit darker. And then when you go back to this edit mode, you see this little, let me scroll in nice and tight. See this black triangle that's on the top? That's from these little bars you can grab on the top. And what these are, these are little fade in and fade out bars. In DaVinci Resolve, every clip has them, one on the beginning and one on the end. So an easy fade out, you can grab this and pull it over and you've just faded out that clip. But what I'm gonna use it for is to actually fade in this clip because I don't want it to look dark in the beginning and bright at the end. I want it to look even throughout. So I'm gonna grab this fader knob and I'm gonna scroll to the part where I'm no longer in the trees. There we go. And that's about what point you want it to stop. And just like that, we now have an edited clip for a super dark area, just like before. This is what it looks like without Dehancer. This is what it looks like with it on. Look at the grass. Just look at how much more natural color the grass looks. The green is so off tone without this Dehancer. Now, this one in particular, will use this sky darken node that I had turned off before. Turn this on. We're gonna come down over here and these are our windows. You'll see what they mean in just a minute. Come down here to your gradient, click on that, and here's your gradient bar. So we'll zoom on out. I'm gonna put the gradient above, grab the arrow and just drag it down a little bit. Now what, you'll see what this is gonna do as soon as I start adjusting it. So if I grab this gain right here and turn it down, see how it's taking the whole top and making it darker? Watch, let me turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. See what it's doing there? So we'll scroll out, we'll bring it up nice and tall. So that way the effect is very light when it reaches the top. There we go. And if we click somewhere else, it'll get rid of that. And you can see before and after. So it really just darkens the sky a little bit. It works in this situation fairly well. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time and make it perfect so we can go on to the next one. Where this really helps are the situations where you have a house and sky. This really helps darken the sky on top so it matches the ground exposure, giving you a much cleaner shot. That being said, let's move right on to our next clip. This one right here. Let's reset these just like before. Reset nodes, there we go. And we already have our CST applied. Let's turn off the Dehanter and we'll go ahead and rock and roll on this super shadowy backyard because once again, dealing with a shadowy situation, I wanna give you examples for everything. Now we'll go in here and start our edit just as before. Grab your primary node and you can tell that the lift is down, the darks are just so crushed. So we're gonna bring them until they pop all the way up and then bring them right back down to they're just barely crushed. We'll bring the gamma up. See how it's a little fine little game you play back and forth between those two. And then we're gonna bring our highlights down. Now the problem is in this situation where it's really shadowy, bringing the gain down too much is gonna make everything else look dark. So we're gonna go over here to our lights and pull it down that way. So that way it affects just the light tones and just like before, we're bringing it around this 896 mark. I find that to be a really good mark. We're gonna grab our shadows and bring them up since that's what we're dealing with the most. And then we're gonna grab our darks and bring them way down. So we can come back over here and bring the gamma down. Uh, those shadows we brought up too much, I think. There we go. That looks nice right there. Perfect. 
Now log, you can see we've got a little bit of purple and bluish colors from the shadows, which happens quite often, especially with the Air 2S. So we're gonna come in here once again, go back to our main offset, and we're gonna adjust those colors. Take a little bit of that bluish purple out that the Air 2S is notorious for, and there we go. That is much better. So look, before we adjusted colors, after. Now, turn on that dehancer node and look right here in particular at these trees, even before I turn it on. Boom, look at that. Look how clean that looks. It just looks filmic, right? It just looks a little bit better, as I said. Come back in about two days and you'll see another video on my channel specifically about Dehancer that really will help you out. Now the last one we're gonna do is this house right here because it's a little crazy. It has a really nice backyard. Everything's heavily wooded around it. So we're gonna dive right in just like before. We're gonna reset these nodes just like before and we're gonna go straight up to the primaries. As before, since this is shadowy, look how crushed these blacks are. So we're gonna raise up that lift and then bring it down gently until it's just barely crushed, just like that. This is a much more difficult yard to deal with because this is all so bright, but I'm gonna show you how I deal with that. So let's go and bring down the gain a little bit to where we want it, just like that. Then we'll come over here to our other wheels, our dynamic range wheels. We're gonna bring up the shadows, bring down the darks a little bit. Then we're gonna go back over here to our highlight node that we hit before. There we go just like that. Look how good that looks already. Let's take the dehancer off so you can see. Look at the greens again, then turn it back on. The greens just look so much better. Everything looks muted and better. So the sky darken node, I know we used it to darken the sky before, but here we're going to use it for something else. We're actually going to use it, turn it on. We're going to come back over here to our windows. And just like before, we're going to grab the gradient scroll out, but instead of moving it to the top, this time we're gonna move it over here and we're gonna make it go this way because we wanna try and level out the tones from this side to that side. So we're actually gonna darken this side a little bit. So we'll go right back over to our windows. We'll bring down the gamma on this side, just like that. And look how much more even that looks. Off, on, off, on. And if you don't like the way it's cutting out right there, you can go right back to it. You have to go select on your actual window nodes again. This will pop up and you can drag it over as far as you want to. Just like that. Now look at the difference. If we go much more even, well composed shot. Now we can go back to primaries and raise the gamma for everything. And look how it's raising everything nice and smooth. Turn off Dehancer once again so you can see this digital green noise. And there we go, boom, that's it. The very last thing I do is stabilize, but everyone knows how to stabilize at this point. If you don't, it's right here. Click on this one right here. And this is how you stabilize. You literally just press a button and it does all the work for you. That's it, rock and roll, all that jazz. That is everything I wanna teach you about how I currently color grade my Air 2S footage. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out this video on Wednesday. Very, very important. Catch you next time.